Hey guys, it's Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, November the 25th, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today we're going to be discussing a deep dive into your comments, questions, and concerns from last week. There was an awful lot of good comments, questions, and concerns from the topics I brought up, and some of the questions were valid very valid, and I want to do a deep dive into them so you guys understand why I did what I did. As you'll notice, it's cloudy and rainy. I'm going to tell you something. This is weird, but I swear it's true. It has been cloudy and rainy every Black Friday, I think, in my life. I cannot ever remember a Black Friday not being cloudy and rainy. But even that is not going to get me down. I'm in a great mood for two reasons. One, number one, sales were just wicked good yesterday and the day before, where I really thought they were going to be terrible. So, once again, I survived the most dreaded day of the year, which was yesterday. Ugh. That being said, let's get into your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. The Cat Complex official wrote with the situation, Joe, I was wondering what your thoughts were on large retailers selling on eBay. I'm a smaller collectible seller on eBay myself, but I decided to purchase a set of shirts from official jockey store, quote, jockey store, unquote, on eBay. A few days went by and nothing. No posted tracking, no communications, nothing. I'm in the middle of an item not received limbo now and they still won't tell me if it was shipped or anything. I decided to look more into their feedback and to my horror, I saw dozens if not hundreds of feedbacks describing a similar situation to the one I'm in. Having improper inventory levels, canceling items at whim, no communications, etc. If I even had a fraction of their negatives, eBay would remove me off the platform extremely quickly. In my opinion, there seems to be a blatant disregard for the terms of service with some of these retail accounts. Do you think there is a bias toward retailers, or am I looking at this wrong? Well, Cat Complex Official, from what you're telling me, the person or company has feedback that's much less than 100%. I truthfully think you should have checked their feedback before making any purchases from them. All right? I think that was maybe a mistake on your part that you didn't. Anytime I'm making a purchase on eBay and the feedback is less than 100%, I check just to see what's going on. Now, perhaps it's just one disgruntled eBayer, a bad buyer, in which case that happens, all right? But I always check their feedback, and you didn't. But yes, I do feel that these big box sellers do get a lot more leeway because they bring in a lot more money for the platform, especially the China sellers. Where was this person located at? Were they in the United States? So let us know on that when you get a chance. The next comment I'm going to read is from eCurb. I think it was a mistake to refund the bad buyer just to get the negative removed three weeks sooner. Your sales won't suffer during that three weeks. I get that you don't like to have that big red dot, but that's an emotional reaction. When you sell on eBay, you should have only one goal, to make money. Having a bad feeling shouldn't enter into it. You specified getting that feedback removed three weeks sooner. I'm afraid it could have and probably would have been a lot longer than three weeks. And I'll explain more as we go along with some comments from some other people. Next comment is from Marcin Biankowski. Just wanted to point out that your disclaimer is wrong. Number one, it's more like 90% of the people on eBay are honest, not 99.9%. .9%. And you said selling on eBay is fun. Maybe sometimes, but as a business owner living off eBay, sales is actually very stressful. All these crooks, liars, and some unfair eBay policies make me sick. 
currently I have one red dot sitting there for over five weeks. Buyer didn't return the item within three weeks, and eBay extended his return. Can't do anything about it, and would never give him free money. This piggybacks on the comment that I just read earlier, I think it was from eCurb, where he talked about the fact that I jumped the return process and gave the buyer back his money because I didn't want to wait the three weeks. Well, in the case of Marson, you can see the three weeks jumped to five weeks, and it's still not over. This is hot coffee, by the way, on a cold, cloudy, rainy day. Claudio Medarios wrote, Nice video as always, Joe. Just a few minutes after watching your video, and while I was preparing some eBay sales, a buyer opened a fraudulent item not as described case with his payment institution for a package I had just uploaded the tracking number and printed the shipping label. How can a case be opened for an item not as described when I haven't even left it at the post office yet? As always, this type of buyer is welcome to join my block list. Because the package was still in my house and in my country, we only pay the shipping at the post office, I gave her her money back and hoped to never hear from her again. Just as I was starting to type this message, I received a negative from another upset buyer. She wasn't home to receive the package, and on her mind, it's my fault. Crazy, these people. Already made an appeal to eBay support. I just checked my feedback, and it was removed. It took two minutes. It has been an interesting afternoon. See you next Friday. Claudio touched on a point that I have been talking about for months. eBay's return system has many black holes in it that need to be closed. This should never happen. A person should not be able to open an item not as described case if the tracking shows they haven't even received it yet. That's just a, a glaring loophole in the eBay return system, and it really needs to be addressed for the good of all sellers. L.J. Whitmire wrote, what I've heard and read is that these non-paying buyers are sending out offers to multiple sellers for the same item. Then they don't pay for the one, I'm sorry, then they pay for the one they actually want. eBay doesn't know how to run a business. Bad customers can destroy your company. In this case, bad buyers are ruining the platform. I've made the decision to shut my store down at the end of 2023. I'm basically liquidating my store next year and moving on to something else. It's sad. LJ, I agree with the first part of your statement. I have heard and read the same thing you said. Where buyers are sending out what I call shotgun offers. <laughs> to many sellers. And they only accept one. Maybe it's the first one, maybe it's the cheapest one, and all the rest are left swinging in the breeze, and eBay does nothing about these non-paying bidders. You're right. As far as the second part of your comment, I don't think you should shut your store down in 2023. There's too much money out there. Christ! Come on! Yes, yes, yes! There's aggravation, there's bad buyers. But, yeah... For your own sake, don't shut your store down. Michelle Murnick wrote, Thanks, Joe, for having the Cayones to talk about deadbeat non-paying buyers on your YouTube channel. This current Q4 has been the worst for me with this problem on eBay. Since eBay is not addressing this ongoing issue, I address it in my own way. Trust me, if they don't pay within a reasonable amount of time, I use the sell similar feature and get my item back up being seen on the platform. When the time comes for me to leave feedback for a non-paying deadbeat buyer, I do the positive-negative feedback and make sure everyone who bothers to check the feedback knows when a particular buyer does not pay. It's unfortunately our only recourse as sellers to let others know about the deadbeat non-paying jerks. When a platform who I pay good money to every month doesn't have my back, I do what I need to do to protect myself and other sellers. This is the prevailing feeling in the community. 
good sellers, honest sellers are frustrated. Frustrated with being dicked over. 5797029, Mike wrote, Returns have been the main complaint here. Not that many, but each one has its unique situation. Here is the latest one to close out. The buyer purchased a Mercedes taillight. The buyer opens a return using, quote, wrong item sent, unquote. Included was a picture of his vehicle which shows the same kind of taillight I sent him. Nothing happens for three weeks. Wednesday at 2 p.m., I received three messages from eBay. Case opened, return request canceled, case closed in my favor, and the funds are mine. At 3 p.m., around an hour later, I hear someone at my front door. It's the mailman with an unexpected surprise. The Mercedes taillight returned outside of the eBay return system. Now what am I supposed to do? eBay customer service says do nothing eBay customer service is right. They are 100% right. I've talked about this for the last 20 years. Any returns outside of the eBay system are null and void. Do not engage. Do not engage. Shore Essentials wrote, Hey Joe, great video as always. I feel, however, that by not revealing the deadbeat buyer's username so that we can also block her, you're doing your subscribers a disservice. I'm a straight shooter too, love the videos, but help us out please. This is a very interesting comment and it's probably the most thought-provoking comment in my opinion of all of last week. And let me just take a sip of this and I'm going to address that in detail. Okay, last week I spoke of and showed you an account of a deadbeat bidder who had racked up at least 61 reverse positive feedbacks where frustrated sellers say the person never paid. There is nothing I would rather do than come out and tell you guys the ID of that bad buyer. Do you guys know why I did not reveal the bad buyer's name? Now, sure, Essentials didn't figure it out, but I'm sure some of you guys did. Okay? I stated early in my video that a lot of eBay higher-ups watch my videos, and I said I'm glad to have them because these videos serve as a conduit from us sellers to the eBay executives, and that's great. Now, keeping that in mind, Let's say I revealed the bad buyer's ID last week. For argument's sake, let's say their name was John Smith 25. What do you think the eBay higher-ups would have done with that information? Okay? One of two things. Number one, definitely, they would have checked out John Smith 25 and looked at the person's feedback. Do you think... They would have sanctioned the bad buyer? No. No way. They wouldn't have. Do you think they would have looked at all the sellers that left reverse positive feedback and sanctioned them? Now think about this. This is freaking important. You Don't get me going, man. Don't you dare get me going. I was trying to protect the good sellers who are frustrated with these bad buyers just last week by not revealing the ID of that deadbeat bidder who is just totally abusing the eBay platform. I do realize what Shore Essential said, that it would be a service to you guys to tell you who it is. And I would love to. Please, believe me, I would love to. But I can't do it on this video because I do feel for the frustrated eBay sellers that they could get sanctioned. Do you see my point? So for those of you guys who I know personally, for instance, someone like Mike, 5797029, or Dennis Copper, or Gary the Coin Guy, or, can't think of her name, the lady who collects Barbies, any of you guys who I know real good, 
feel free, if you want, to email me at crazynydriver at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy to share the link to this person's feedback with you so you can look at it yourself. Because you guys, I trust, and you guys need to be protected. I'm on your side, all right? It's spelled the same way as my, my channel, Crazy NY Driver, and then just add at AOL.com. And, yeah, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. If you're someone I kind of don't know, you better share your YouTube with me because I want to make sure you're a legit person and not one of these blank throwaway channels, which is similar to a blank throwaway eBay account these days. Okay. Another point of contention from last week's video was the fact that I gave that bad buyer back his money at least three weeks ahead of time. Quite a few people wrote in about that, and I think just about everybody disagreed with my modus operandi. And I took quite a bit of heat from it. Now, guys, keep a few things in mind. Number one, I didn't have to come out here and tell you that story. I could have kept it quiet and flown under the radar. But that's not how I roll. I believe in full disclosure, and I'm totally honest with you. I'm a straight shooter, and I'll always speak my mind. You won't always like what I say, but you're going to hear the truth from me, and I think you know that. This is the first time in my almost 24 years on eBay that I actually had a person leave me negative feedback before sending back the item. This has never happened to me before. Now, somebody wrote in the comments that the one negative feedback is not going to hurt my sales. I disagree. I really disagree. I've seen many posts on Facebook that stated that when a person got negative feedback, even just one, their sales immediately dropped off. I can't prove it, but I've heard this from too many people. All right? I didn't like giving this guy back his money when he had not yet sent the item back to me. All right? He is a legitimate scammer. Number one, now if you remember the case, number one, he purchased the item, didn't read the listing, and after I printed the label and boxed it, the very next day, he wants to cancel because he didn't see they were blemished. At $60 or $65, you think you're getting new stuff? You're out of your mind. So that was number one. He violated eBay policy. you got to read the listing. All right? Number two, when he got the items, he filed a false item not as described case. Number three, he left me improper negative feedback. I did nothing wrong. I, just, I said the items were blemished. There was no lying there. I sent them in a timely manner. He's just a jerk. Okay? Did he get over on me? He certainly did. Why did he get over on me? Because the eBay return system is freaking flawed. I could sit down at a round table with the executives and show them all the loopholes in the return system. Why? You think they're going to change it after all this time? No. Do I like losing $65? Guys, you know me. I hate losing 65 cents let alone $65, okay? Did I take it up to Wazoo on that deal? Yes. Not going to lie to you. I lost, all right? Sometimes, in my opinion, you have to cut and run, and that was one of them. If I hadn't done what I did, I would still have that red dot on my account, which would be unfair, and I don't think I would have made the crazy money I've made the last few days. I expected yesterday to be a really dead day. It wasn't dead. It was great. The morning was excellent, which is unusual. It slowed up at about, I guess, 4 o'clock my time. I, mean, I wouldn't say slowed up. It stopped. At 4 o'clock, bang, the switch went off and my sale stopped. I don't know where everybody was, but they weren't online. But still in all, I'm very happy. I did well the last couple of days. I have no complaints about sales. So while it hurt, 
it did hurt me to give the guy his money back. He won. He beat me. But I did what I had to do to survive. All right? I don't like doing it. I would never have done it if it wasn't for that negative feedback. This is a bad buyer who's, felt, who's found a way to exploit the return system as so many others have. So many others. There are so many videos about this topic. It's just disgusting. But anyway, <clears throat> let me move on to a few new things. I'm encountering a problem over the last six months that I never encountered before. And it's buyers will buy something, pay right away, and then they do what I call the address dance. They say, send the items to my new address, 123 Main Street. Now, in the old days, that wasn't a big deal. You could edit the address when you're printing your shipping label. But for the last six months, when I've tried to edit my address, the new address that the buyer is providing, I always get an error message. I can't do it. Now, I don't know if it's just me or if it's a new policy they have, but it's, it's to the point that any time someone does the address dance, I just write to them and say, absolutely not. eBay will not let me change the address. I'm canceling the transaction. I'm going to relist the item. If you want to repurchase it, here is the link. But please, submit your correct address. And almost always, the buyer does it within 24 hours. They repurchase with their correct address, and there's no problem. But if you guys have experienced this, this business with not being able to edit the address, let me know, because it happens to me consistently. Consistently. So, yeah. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the rain is starting to pick up again. So I'm not going to stay out here much longer because I don't want to get wet. Plus, it's kind of still part of a holiday weekend, so I think everybody's schedule is a bit screwed up. Even my schedule is kind of screwed up because I usually film these videos Friday afternoon. Let's just say maybe 3 or 4 o'clock. You know what time it is right now? Does anybody want to guess what time it is? I'll show you. Ten oh three a.m. <laughs> so yeah, let me think. Are there any points I can cover? Sales were good. I got no complaints. No returns this week. I did have an unusual cancellation. What was it that the guy canceled on? Gave me lip. I had to block him. Just the other day, as I said, no returns at all this week. Knock wood. I did have one cancellation that I hadn't printed the label yet. What was the situation with that? A guy purchased an item. No, 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 no. It's coming. No, I know. I know. A guy sent me a best offer on an item. A reasonable best offer. Let's just say 80 bucks for a $100 item. All right? And in the love note, he said, I also want free shipping, which is something I never do. But in this case, the item was a major dog. I mean, I would gladly give this guy free shipping and sell it for 80 bucks. I mean, mm, mm, whoo, love it. All right? So... I accepted the offer, and I sent him an invoice, and I didn't charge him for shipping. Fair enough. A couple of minutes later, here comes the dance. Bum, 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 bum. He writes to me, cancel my sale. I just realized this is the wrong size for me. That kind of thing, I admit to you. I do admit it pisses me off. The guy went out of his way to send me a best offer. Demand free shipping without even checking. Only on eBay can they get away with this. So I wrote back to him and I said, no problem. I'll be glad to cancel the item. I haven't shipped it yet anyway. By the way, I'm blocking you so you can't do this to me again. 
That's very, very important, in my opinion, to let the buyer know that there are ramifications for violating eBay policy. To clarify how he's violating eBay policy, when you send a best offer, it is a binding, binding contract if the seller accepts. Those are eBay's words, okay? They're all violating eBay policy. They're wasting my time, your time. It ain't going to fly. Now, when I send them the, by the way, you're blocked and you'll never get another item from me, 50% of the people know they're wrong and they just don't respond. The other 50% want to fight. Why? Why are you blocking me for? We could do more business in the future. No, we ain't doing any business in the future. Then I wrote back to this guy because he was a fighter, and he said that. I said, there's an old saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That is such a good saying, and I use it, and I live by it. And, as you all probably know, I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this week's installment of the Crazy New York Driver Show, filmed on this cloudy, rainy day outside. Every Friday I make these videos to try and help you stay successful as an eBay seller. If you think I'm doing a good job, leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comment section what you want me to hit up. And maybe I'll be reading your comment next week like I read the other comments I just read earlier today. Hopefully next week it won't be cloudy and rainy, but it probably will. And... Nothing else to say, but go out there, make a ton of money on eBay, rock on, and peace!